Sara Snogerup Linse. You chair the Nobel Committee for Chemistry and have just announced the Nobel Prize of this year, which is about the tiny molecular machines. How small are they? Yes, uh, yeah, they are very, very small. They are so small you can't see them. Uh, you can't see them by eye, you can't even see them by a light microscope. So they are on the nanometer, so 1 to 10 nanometer large. Uh, and a nanometer, if you take a millimeter and divide it in one million parts, each part is a nanometer. So they are like yeah. one million parts of a hair stroke. Yeah, yeah. they're about ten, yeah. one to 10,000 times smaller than a human hair. Oh, wow. Yes. And uh, you mentioned also that the dream is old to construct such tiny yes. machines. Uh, so how can they overcome the challenges? Yeah, that's a very good question because I think the dream started in the end of the 1950s uh, with Feynman's lectures where he gave a challenge to the scientists. Richard to, Feynman. Uh, Richard Feynman, Feynman exactly. Place. Yes. Glorious. To construct molecules that could act as machines. Uh, and there are two obstacles. One obstacle is this thing that you need to have parts that are freely movable, either physically movable or you need some kind of isomerizable bonds. That's one challenge. And the other challenge is that molecular systems always want to reach equilibrium and fluctuate around it and they do have all the random motions. So it's a main challenge to create motion in one defined direction. So when you put in energy, you want your system to either rotate or move in the direction you have desired and not randomly. So they yes. didn't want to have them silent in equilibrium, but they also wanted to stop the movement, the brown, Brownian movement. Yeah, or at least overcome it, because you can't really stop it. It's there too, uh, but you have to come around it. Uh, and one way they found to come around it was to use asymmetric molecules so that when you waste your energy, they come in a frustrated or tense state, and when they relax, they will be more prone to relax in one direction compared to the other because of their asymmetry. And once they have relaxed, they can't get back. And, uh, and then they can move. So I wa wonder what does fuel them? How come they move? <laughs> they move because we give them energy. So they are not autonomous. They are moved at will from the user. So we put in a light source, we put in heat, or we put in chemical energy. So they are like the man-made motors. You have to put in some kind of fuel. Mm. And the fuel is almost like, I thought about plants, for example. They also live uh, by light, so exactly. to say, putting yes. light on them. Mm -hmm. uh, so is there a dream to construct living molecules? Uh, I don't think that this type of development will lead to living molecules. The living means that something can also replicate itself. Uh, and there is nothing in those molecules that we award today that allow them to replicate themselves. Mm. Well, well, when we talk about nano machines and nano uh, molecules, uh, the, there is also a lot of science fiction about that. And then the nano robots are the main heroes of science fiction stories, and also they pose a threat when they start to self-replicate themselves. So what do you think about those machines? Are they a big promise or a big threat? Uh, I think they're mainly a big promise because they don't have this property of self-replication. So they cannot really take over. Uh, and they are all controlled by an energy input. So if you don't want them to do something, you can just stop the energy input and they will stop working. And now they are with us here. So what is the next step? What, what is really the dream and the vision now? I think one of our lords put this very nicely when we called him, that this is the start of a new molecular era. So we think this is a very right time to award this Nobel Prize because this is when it takes off towards the applications. And we can only guess. But smart materials for sure will come. Materials that can change shape or function or properties when you, for example, shine light on them. There was also, we mentioned also uh, something that also Richard Feynman mentioned before. It was about uh, minuscule machines uh, that can bring the medicines to the body to swallow a doctor, yes. he named it. 
Is yeah. this a This is also a perspective, and, and one of our laureates, Ben Feringa, has done some work in that direction uh, with antibiotics that are photo-switchable, so you can activate it just in the place where you need the activity. So they have to move it to find the place. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually activate them from outside. Um, there are three laureates and three different machine types, as I mm -hmm. understand. Was it a race, a big competition, who's coming to be first? Uh, I don't think so. I think they actually came in sequence. So I think Sauvage was the first one making the interlocked wings and, uh, and developing the synthesis, how to make uh, with good yield. Because I think these kind of molecules could be made before, but the yield was very poor because they mostly self, you got most of those. <laughs> So you have to play tricks to get high yield of the interlocked structures. What, what's yeah. wrong with this one? Uh, there's really nothing wrong because you can see it's twice here, but it takes two to tango. Mm. Uh, and a machine needs more than one part. You mm. can't make a machine of one part, you have to have at least two. Mm. I understand. So this is the, the dead one. <laughs> That's the dead one, and here are two dead ones, but together they come alive. So you, did, did they cooperate in any, in any way, or if they didn't compete, <laughs> the uh, laureates? I think they actually have co cooperated. They seem to be good friends, all of them, and they have also worked together on some projects. So they are more, much more cooperators. Uh, what's going on now? The, uh, the last uh, machine mentioned in the Nobel Prize uh, motivation was uh, from 1999. So it's uh, almost two decades ago. Yes. What happened after that? Uh, a lot of groups around the world have taken up uh, this field. So it's really an exploding field in chemistry. So there are enormous amount of groups. They repeat what the lawyers have done, which is a fantastic achievement. I mean, it means that it's solid, very good solid methods that others can repeat in other labs. And then they have continued to build onto this. Uh, and one development is these materials that actually change shape when you shine on them. And all three laureates are still active in the field? Uh, they are still active, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah, for taking your time. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much.